Hey guys, Tracy here. On this week's video, I would like to talk about a couple different things. We are in the middle of our growing season here. So we're at the end of our spring, early summer crops getting ready to, uh, to fall out. And then our summer is starting to come on. So we're a little bit behind here. We had some weird wacky weather in May. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people did where we had 40s and 50s in May, and then we had a 100 degree week, and then we went back to the 50s. Everything is having a hard time rebounding from that, and now we have literally been in 95 and plus weather for the last three weeks. So everything's a little stressed out. That's okay. We can work through this. Um, my cherry tomatoes are not where they need to be. They're probably a month, a month and a half behind right now, but, you know, we're going to work through that. Same as my cucumbers. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you guys a walkthrough of what items uh, look like when they grow outside versus what they look like when they grow into a high tunnel. So let's get started. I try to put everything in my row. So I have a row of habanero here, and then I have a row of my chili peppers. I've got four or five uh, Carolina Reapers on the end here, but pretty much it's a row of chilies. And then I have a row of big jalapenos. I like to try to put everything I can in one row. That way, when I do write it down on my list, it's easy for me to remember uh, what everything is um, growing here. Now, I do have some pepperoncinis and some sweet snacking peppers in that other tunnel, which is the all metal kit. I like to keep my peppers spread out. Not sure if germination is going to be an issue, but you never know. So I like to keep my sweet peppers over there and I like to keep my hot over there or I flip flop them depending on um, what my crop rotation. This year, all my hot peppers are down here in this front yard garden. They're doing okay on size. It is almost July 1st. I would hope that these things would have been another another four or five inches taller by now and putting on pretty good fruit. But like I said in the intro, we have had some setbacks on some weather. So I think that has a lot to do with it. And I know it's not just me. I've heard this on Instagram and everywhere else that people are having a lot of issues. Um, but we have picked a little bit of fruit off of these, so we are getting started. Usually my peppers don't really crank out really hardcore till about August here. I'm in zone 5A, 5B, depending on how you look at it. August usually is our hit on this. I've got a little bit of some uh, zinnias and stuff planted, and I've got some pro-cut sunflowers in these beds back here. We've always talked about, um, now the wind's gonna pick up. We've always talked about not leaving your beds empty. So I did have, a couple seed trays and some pro-cut sunflowers for bouquet, so I went ahead and put those in the ground just to kind of fill out the garden a little bit. Let's check out these cherry tomatoes. All right, as you guys can see there, we do have some of those black cherries starting to come on, but it's few and far between. I've got to come in here and do a little bit of uh, cleaning up on these vines. I've kind of let them guys go trying to get caught up, make sure they are real set and acclimated to the outside here before I really start chomping on them. But they are doing okay. They are coming along. Like I said, they're not as far along as they should be, or at least what I think they should be. But you know what? It's Mother Nature. You're going to get what you get with her. So you just got to uh, acclimate yourself to Mother Nature, just like we acclimate ourselves to our plants, or our plants to the outside. But they are coming along. Um, they'll look a lot better after I trim them up, but they aren't looking too bad. Here we do have some cucumbers. As you guys can see, we do have, I don't know if you can see that or not, but we do have a couple fruits starting to set here. Um, they're looking pretty healthy. Like I said, they are still looking a little behind um, because, for one, I transplanted them out late because of the weather. We've got them trellised up here on this trellis. This is what I like to do outside. But we have gotten a few uh, cucumbers starting here. Everything's looking really good, so let's move on. All right, in this high tunnel here, you can see uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Far better growth, even though, you know, we're in the middle of summer here or the start of summer. I'm still growing colder crops here. As you can see, I've got Rose Salanova in here, a different succession. I've got one that was planted out a week ago, one that was planted out two weeks ago, and now we've got some head lettuce also planted here, and I've got a whole row of green beans planted over here. Growing in a high tunnel does make a difference. Now, now saying that, I will always still grow certain crops outside, and I will always still grow crops in this high tunnel. I love growing in high tunnels. I can control pretty much every aspect of the growing of each crop here, regardless if it's green beans, basil, radish, salad, it doesn't really matter. I control that. I control the wind, I control the rain, and I can control the sun. Uh, we can control the sun with shade cloth. You guys watched that video where we can keep the temperature down in here, making it a reality for me to grow lettuce in 100 degree temperature. I can control the water. 
by using drip irrigation. So I can set that to, to water every day, once a day, twice a day, three times a day, once every other day, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever, wherever you live and whatever your watering needs may be. And I can also control the wind by rolling the sides down or rolling the sides up. That will either take the heat in or take the heat out or let the wind in or let the wind out. If you can see in my background here on my basil, the basil is moving around a pretty good clip. We've got about a seven to 10 mile an hour wind outside. So that's really keeping this tunnel nice and cool and aired out. Um, everything is grown great in here. I've got a little bit of inner planting, as you can see. I'll kind of get down there. You guys can see that look right there. I've got some French breakfast radish interplanted with my salad. Now that's just a trial. I, I'm not a huge inner plant kind of guy. I knew, I know a lot of people also do that. I just kind of try a little bit here and there. I've tried with lettuces and tomatoes and had a fail on it because the tomatoes blocked out most of the sun to the lettuce. The lettuce tried to go to bolt. And so I'll, I'll never do the lettuce with the tomatoes. I know some people do it um, religiously and have great success. I just don't care. So what I did is I put a little row of radish in here just to see if I could get one or two harvests of radishes going with my salad mix. I've got radish over here. As you can see, this radish over on this side looks really good. Getting a little bit of size on it right now. So I've got this radish intertwined with my sweet Genovese basil, which is intergrown with some dill at the end. Um, I like to keep a lot of fresh herbs if we can. Uh, growing herbs in the high tunnel is the only way to go. I have zero bug pressure here. Look how great this basil is. Let me pull up one of these. I'm going to pull up one of these leaves so you can check this leaf out. Now, this by no means is a big basil leaf. You can see the size of my, my hand here, how big that leaf is. And these basils have only been in the ground for about 60 days. So I'll find out here in about another month. We'll start harvesting these in the next two or three weeks to take to market as fresh basil, or you could dry it. But um, we'll also just, uh, just, just cut the plants and sell the plants also. Now, we also have some dill here also. Um, we'll use these. These are getting ready to go to flower, so they're going to work perfect. We've got probably about a dozen or two dozen pickles ready to harvest this week, so our plans are uh, we like to do uh, refrigerator pickles for us. We don't sell them, of course, but we do, we do have them for us. So we like to keep a little bit of fresh dill grown here. And this is the first year I've grown it in the high tunnel. And I will tell you, like I said, with all the other herbs, this is the only way I'm going to grow herbs from now on is inside of a high tunnel. Um, growing this dill outside stresses it really good. And the size of this dill is amazing. I love this. So, yeah, we'll use some of this dill in with our garlic pickles when we make those this weekend. So that's a cool addition to the garden. And also over in this bed over here, I've got about a 15-foot uh, row of purple dragon carrots. I don't like to grow a whole row of those purple or red or yellow carrots. They seem not to do as well as a sweet orange carrot does. Um, we grow romance carrots. But I like to grow a small bed just so I could add a little bit of pop to cover or color to pop at the farmer's market table. You always want to have a little bit of color. Um, everything else is looking great. You can see those radishes right here intertwined with that salanova looks amazing. The head lettuce looks really good and the green beans look really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk up to the other tunnel and I'm going to show you the good and the bad about what happened. All right. You can kind of see what's going on in here and you're going to say, well, this looks completely different than it did two or three videos back. And yeah, you're right. Um, unfortunately, I had to rip out all of my tomatoes that were in here. I do have some stragglers. I've got four plants here, and I've got a row over there of the Kellogg's breakfast. Um, had a lot of issues with my tomatoes this year, and that's going to be the good and the bads about this. That's one thing about this series. I was really wanting to show everybody the goods and the bads. A lot of times you only see the goods of a farm and you never see the bads or the frustrations. Trust me, I am frustrated at a lot of things this year. Now I know going into this year that my tomato um, harvest is non-existent. So what tomatoes did make it and what I do have is just going to be for me and my wife. So I will not have that revenue stream this year of actually selling the tomatoes. And that's a big hit. Um, you know, that, that's a lot of, you're talking thousands of dollars that I just lost. Um, had some issues with the, the tomatoes, um, and, and I've worked through that. I've got a couple friends that have called me and, um, I'm going to work through that and decide what varieties I need to grow here. Maybe be a little better choices than the ones I have picked. 
Um, you could reach out to your seed supplier. Um, I, I had no idea you could do that. Um, you could reach out to your seed supplier and uh, ask them questions about varieties that should be grown in your area. They could help you. They could steer you away at some of the stuff that you see. When you guys open those big catalogs, you know, you look through there, you see all the pretty pictures, and you read all the pretty captions, and you just want to buy everything. Not everything grows well where you live. Um, especially when you're market farming like this, you've got to be able to produce something that you can sell. And right now, I'm out of sliced tomato. That is literally going, that's a hit to my heart that I don't have that revenue this year. So, But you know what? I jotted it down in my mental notebook. I've taken a couple notes. Um, I've got a hold, actually, I have. I'm lucky enough to have a couple friends that are very big in this industry that have reached out to me and had other people that are big in this industry reach back to me and help me answer my questions and try to help me along going in the next. So that's pretty awesome to have that network, network, network. I learned that today from one of my new friends. Um, networking is very important. So I'm going to try to do better with networking with other people to help them and also get help myself. But got two more beds of carrots grown here. These two beds are empty right now. Still got plastic on them. Some of that, I've got six trays of lettuce going um, in trays right now. I'm going to start back filling these with lettuce. Uh, we did have some Johnny's Wildfire mix. I cropped out the rest of that Salanova. There was, I think, 65 pounds of Salanova left in that half bed. I cropped that out and took the market. And then I've got another 50-foot bed that had Wildfire mix in it. I took that out, and now we're going to do head lettuce in that. Um, the challenges of growing in a high tunnel with certain stuff. Now, this high tunnel might as well be across the country from the other one. That other DIY high tunnel is actually in my portion of my front yard. I've got three big elm trees in the front yard that are probably 60, 70 feet tall. They shade out a lot of that sunlight as you get into that 2.30, 3 o'clock um, afternoon. We talked about that earlier. So those plants that are heat-loving sun loving do get a little bit of a break of the sun going in the most extreme part of your sun is going to be about three four o'clock until sundown because of the massive heat that's just pouring on that those crops get a little break my tomatoes last year we had bhn 589s last year they did phenomenal in that tunnel literally had over a thousand pounds of fruit that we um harvested last year this year grew the same variety i have zero um even with shade cloth on here, you're still going to have issues with heat. Um, it's probably almost 100 degrees in here right now. That tunnel that we were just in was about 81 degrees. We're almost 100 here. There's a 20 degree swing just because it's shaded out more. And this one's in bluebird sky. So what uh, we're going to look into is trying to do some type of uh, heat extraction in here, whether it I thought about above my doorways there, I've got room and I've got enough metal left over that I was going to put uh, either some screen in there to let the heat in and out or put one of those vents in there, um, those heat activated vents or even a vent that I could just come through and open and then close and just leave open. That way as the heat rises during the day, the tunnel heat can actually go out. So I did learn that. Um, cucumbers are looking okay. I've got a lot of fruit on them. This is also my first. This is also my first year growing cucumbers in the high tunnel. So I do have a lot of fruit. Um, I asked my buddy some questions today about male and female flowers. I usually grow cucumbers outside, like most of you do. So um, um, when you grow cucumbers outside, you pretty much have a lot of pollinators in here. You don't. So you have to buy certain varieties that have male and female flowers that can help pollinate this. I had some questions on pollination. He answered a lot of questions. They're, I mean, they're growing with some height. You know, I'm not a very tall guy. I'm only 5'10", so you're looking at probably about six and a half, seven feet tall cucumbers, and they're going to reach the top there by the end of the year. But hopefully we'll be able to get a lot. I've got a lot of little fruit, so hopefully we'll be able to get a lot of fruit set. All right, now we're into the back half of the tunnel here. You can see I've got a lot of snacking peppers. You can see uh, the amount of peppers we're getting on this. So we are getting good uh, fertilization and good um, watering issues here. So. These are working great. This is my carrot bed here. We've been pulled. We probably pulled four or five dozen carrots yesterday to put in our last weekly bag for the summer. And then we're going to come through here in the next couple of weeks, let these things size up, do the same thing. But the peppers have been looking really great. You guys can see we are getting some great fruit production here. So the high tunnel is helping keep these things going. It's also making some beautiful fruit. This is a snacking Italian-style pepper. 
it will turn that orangey uh, red color, as you can see there. We pulled some yesterday for today's bag, but they are looking great. Carrots are looking great also. We're getting great size with them. It's the first time growing carrots in summer. I am a early spring, late fall into winter carrot grower. So um, we've got some bell peppers here. We're getting some of these fruits. We pulled some off yesterday, but we do have some. Just pull this one out. There you go. Get some pretty decent size. Not huge, um, but you are getting some pretty decent sized carrots. So that's pretty awesome to know that um, one of my goals was to grow carrots in the summer. Um, so goal achieved, I guess. But we do have, you know, some spark that's on these carrots we're planted two weeks ago. All right, guys, I hope that answers any questions you may or may not have about the difference between growing outside versus growing in a high tunnel. There are plus and minuses in both aspects. Um, you know, once again, to wrap up, growing in a high tunnel is phenomenal. I think it's the only way to go. My goal is to 100% grow undercover. Uh, we've talked about that before. I can control everything from the weather to uh, rain uh, to wind to pests and everything. That's the great thing about it. The bad thing about it is I don't get pollinators in here, so I have to buy certain varieties that are uh, will pollinate themselves. And uh, there's a lot of humidity issues in here, a lot of blight, a lot of humidity. Um, it gets very hot in these high tunnels, so you have to find varieties that are hybrids that will take the heat or resistant to certain mosaic diseases or blights or anything like that. So you can't just throw, you could possibly throw any type of uh, seed in here, but to get the best uh, growing from it, you're going to want to gear more towards high tunnel growing. Stuff. Growing outside is awesome because it's mother nature. Um, you get native soil, but on the other end, if it rains every day, an inch every day, you're going to get flooded out. If you've got extreme drought, you're going to get flooded out. It's harder to water outside, even with drip irrigation, because of the evaporation we're in here. This um, is kind of like a, um, is kind of a growing culture in here, so I can control the evaporation a little more. All right, guys, I think this is where we're going to wrap this video up this week. Hopefully you guys got something out of this week's video. I appreciate all the great comments on the last couple videos you guys left about the wash pack stations. That's what it's all about. But guys, I got to get to work and get some of this stuff cleaned up. But I will see you guys next week. Bye.